in our uh, earlier classes we have dealt with uh, two aspects of personality development one is as you see here overcome disability if you are encountering with any disability whether it is uh, from the birth or in the middle of your life you are encountering you are to come over it you are not sitting there thinking that it is the full stop of our life no put a comma and continue your journey that is what our nick wujisi says in our first lesson in the second what we have read is we have read about many scientists and many people who have did we who did not agree for their failure they have taken failure as their success and reached for the success tried and tried and tried and they reached for the success many people who have seen abraham lincoln and uh, thomas alva edison ford and many people who have seen now we are reading about uh, be positive always here be positive what does it mean yes we have fed up with we want to be part away to go away from it either from the school or from a job or from service from somewhere as you are coming in a positive thinking you have to leave that part in a positive manner in a positive thinking here we are having a story about a carpenter i will read the story for you and uh, you can understand what is called positive thinking and positive thinking always you see here an elderly carpenter was ready to retire he told his employer contractor of his plans to leave the house building business to live a more leisurely life with his wife and enjoy his extended family he would miss the paycheck each week but he wanted to retire they could get by now it is a story of a carpenter he wanted to get retired that is an elderly carpenter was ready to retire to retire it is a verb has been used in its non infinite manner non finite manner and in the place retire in our two lessons i was very clearly talking about the derivatives of the words retire retirement is a noun retire is the verb and retirement is the noun how to use retirement in this sentence let us see an elderly carpenter was ready to get his retirement to take his retirement that way in the place of retire we can use retirement and the sentence can be completed now he told his employer contractor who was his employer contractor building contractor of his plans that is he wanted to retire that is to leave the house building business to live a more leisurely life leisurely the word it is not at it is not adverb here though ending with ly it is adjective because life is there immediately after that with his wife and enjoy extended family extended again here it is adjective he would miss the paycheck each week but he wanted to retire they could get by now they agreed the carpenter wanted a retirement and the contractor the building contractor he agreed okay let him go and retire why he wanted a peaceful life to enjoy his family life family life he himself his wife and son and no more but extended family that means he had become grandfather he had grandchildren he had a daughter in law that is called extended family he wanted to enjoy with that so the contractor as a good fellow he agreed okay enjoy but he requested let us see what he requested here the contractor was sorry to see his good worker go and asked if he could build just one more house as a personal favor you see how good the employer was he accepted that his employee can take 
retirement but before retirement he wanted his employee to build one more house that to not as a business what he put over there as a personal favor right the carpenter agreed you see both the employer and employee both were having good relations and the carpenter readily agreed for it but over a time it was easy to see that his heart was not in his work see it happens because if at all one decides that he wanted to take rest no amount of money no amount of persuasion will make anybody to make him work once again because already is mentally he decided i want to take rest now the same thing happened carpenter mentally decided he want to take rest retirement but his employer wanted him to do one favor that is building of the house so now can he construct or build the house with the same interest and zeal a big question mark let us see what happens here but over time it was easy to see that his hurt was not in his work the hurt will not be with at work the hands may be working but the whole hurted presence of the carpenter will not be there because his he is mentally prepared to take rest he resorted to shoddy workmanship and used inferior material see now i have decided i want to go for retirement what can this employer do for me if i do not do a perfect job what way he can punish me he cannot he wanted a favor i am doing a favor let the work go on as the workman wanted to do so the workman were doing it he was not supervising so the work was very inferior quality work and very shoddy quality of work and the material which is used it is inferior right why why this happens because he is mentally prepared to take rest to go retirement he was not ready to put his whole hearted concentrated on the work so the work was going very avery that is very shoddy work is being done over there it was an unfortunate way to end a dedicated career you see you have worked as an engineer say about uh, 37 years of work you have put 35 years of work you have put it was a very dedicated work very sincere work but if the last piece of work if it is not done in a proper manner the entire 35 years work will be a failure for you so that is what it is said here that is it was an unfortunate way to end a dedicated career so dedicated career how to end at the last moment i am signing out i am punching my card out till then the work should be a perfect one nobody should question why this piece of work went wrong nobody should question that way we have to work but here the carpenter the employer wanted one more house to be built as a favor for him here the carpenter he was mentally prepared for retirement so he did not supervise the work in a proper manner the material came in a very inferior ma- material and the work went very shoddy very hazard work has been done over there when the carpenter finished his work his employer came to inspect the house then he handed the front door key to the carpenter and said this is your house my gift to you employer wanted a house to be built as a favor and that work the carpenter keeping all his lifelong sincere job at stake he made a very shoddy work then the employer comes hands over the key to the same carpenter and says this is your house now you see here 
be positive always at the last moment the carpenter was not positive he was thinking in negative way it is a favor i am doing whatever the way i do the contractor cannot question me that way he decided and he built the house now what happened the key of the same house which he had built without any attention without any workmanship that house had come into his luck that is it means you have worked for the whole year night and day you have worked you have studied you have you have read the spellings you mug up the questions and you have done practicals everything is okay project work also you have submitted everything is okay but the last moment finishing touch is your examination okay i have done very well now i can do it well i can do it well and i do it well there is a hell of a difference so you should always think up to the last moment my finishing will be very nice then you can think you are successful so now the carpenter was shocked of course what a shame if he had only known that he was building his own house he would have done it so differently yes the opportunities will be telling you oh baba i am coming oh keep the door open no the opportunities will be knocking your door you are to recognize that knocking and open the door you cannot keep your door open for every opportunity no and the opportunity itself is a secret mission that it is will be coming to you you have to recognize it so the carpenter lamented later he shocked i made my own house in a shoddy manner i have built everybody else's house in a very good carpentry and now my house itself it is a shoddy one that means his own wife his own son his own daughter in law his own grandchildren they will be looking at his bad workmanship now you understand for whom you are studying and struggling and you for whom you wanted the success just think so what a shame if i had only known that he was he was building his own house he would have done it all so differently so it is with us we build our lives a day at a time often putting less than our best into the building then with a shock we realize we have to live in the house we have built if we could do it over we would do it much differently you are living in your house you are building your house that is your career if you are becoming a doctor it is not for the others you are called as a doctor later if at all you are building yourself you are putting your legs in the shoes of a doctor you are becoming a doctor not me so you have to decide now how best i can put each and every brick in a place to construct a house of a doctor a bungalow of a millionaire right that is how you are going to construct it is not that somebody else will be constructing your house and you will be going in to live no you are not a snake snakes do that they cannot make their own castle snakes castle they can't the ants put it the snakes go and live you are not a snake you are a human being you are to ready yourself everything from the very beginning when you have started learning a b c d you should understand i am learning a b c d for myself and then you are reading sentences for yourself you are reading poems for yourself you are reading poetry for yourself that way you have to think you are not at all reading for others and if you want to prove yourself to be a bad carpenter nobody can object to it nobody can alter it it is you so once again i want to read the same paragraph for you so it is with us we build our lives a day at a time often putting less than our best into the building then with a shock we realize we have to live in the house we have built if we could do it over we would do it much differently so 
the building of house you are knowing from the beginning don't let her blame i was not knowing no you have to build it brick by brick and step by step inch by inch it is in your hand you have to make up your own house but you cannot go back you are a carpenter and every day you hammer a nail place a board or erect a wall someone once said life is a do it yourself project yeah life is what is called as life is a do it yourself project you are erecting your own life nobody else is erecting not your father not your mother not your teacher not the society in the very beginning i told the society should accept you for that you are building yourself your whole body is your building if you are building it properly then you can have a very good life under the roof of the building and if you are not building it properly then it is up to you where to live you will have to search later the place you won't be having in the society your attitude and the choices you make today help build the house you will live in tomorrow therefore build wisely now you want to become anything first of all you make your market i want to become this and if i want to become this what kind of foundation i'll have to put what kind of walls i'll have to take what kind of steel what kind of cement what kind of sand brick everything masonry work what kind of artisan i'll have to take what kind of carpenter side i'll have to take that way you have to select each and everything to make your life a successful one then your life is good you will be living in a very good house right so we have so far studied three aspects of the personality development and as study we have seen in our last class we have seen certain examples of great personalities who had succeeded though there were failures and here i am naming certain industrialists majaz you know he is a auto major having two wheelers and three wheelers right and uh, for a certain uh, period they made uh, the wagons also they made it and second firodias kinetic engineering the luna moped and also kinetic honda that is uh, without gear auto gear vehicle and dhoot dhoot you have not heard him but here this you have heard video com video con we are having all uh, white goods that is your uh, fridge air conditioners tvs and even handset phones etc you know it right is a very you can call him as a millionaire even right and here one more garware lilan roofs garware you have not come across but in maharashtra they are very famous people and garware they make lilan roofs which are uh, used for the fishing nets etc why i named these people r uh, is why i named these people is these have grown as millionaires from the stage of penless position they were not having even a pie during 1947 they were displaced and they have settled in maharashtra now they have grown as millionaires auto major bajaj electronics electricals and everything we know bajaj electricals bajaj Elec electronics auto major he is they are having many in many places they are having their industrial units that is they are giving livelihood to many people those people they do not have in they were not having any capacity for life they did not they did not take that to hurt they have not deserted they did not end their life somehow they kept on living and now they are giving livelihood for billions and billions of people now these are the people dhoot ferodia bajaj and garware why i put these names as 
we are having one industrialist here he has also grown from zero to hero he has also grown from zero to hero did you hear infosys i know the answer is yes and who is the founder of infosys narayan murthy he was from a family a zero family very poor middle class family he had come from why we are reading about him we are to read about these kind of people and we are to learn about these kind of people we should know about these kind of people because they inspire us they teach us how to live and how to grow right that is how to grow is not a easy task from a position of a penniless position to millionaire position it is not a easy go how many troubles he must have encountered these people also encountered many hurdles many difficulties but they are having a position in the rich society today so now here we are having the a part of narayan murthy's life written by his own wife sudha murthy and now this goes like this he was short he was short he was the brightest boy in his class his seniors used to ask him to solve their difficulties in science he could have gone unnoticed in a crowd but once you asked him a question related to physics or maths there was a spark in his eyes the spark only comes when you are intelligent when you understand it when you can when you realize that you can solve it only then there can be the spark in the eyes but once you asked him a question related to physics or maths there was a spark in his eyes he could grasp theories of science faster than the speed of light you must have come across many people you must have read about shakuntala devi in mathematics right and that will come only when you are practicing you are learning mathematics only for mathematics purpose learning purpose you are learning but you are not practicing it have you ever tested the testing uh, divisibility testing for 9 3 6 7 11 5 if any time no only when it is a question in an examination you will be solving it sitting over there you will be coming across many numbers when you are walking on a road when you are bicycling on a road when you are traveling in a bus there will be many combination of many numbers have you ever tried no here our narayan murthy whenever he hears any kind of problem asked by any other student whether he is senior to him or junior to him or contemporary whatsoever whosoever whomsoever if at all he is questioned his eyes will be sparkling why sparkling because he knew the answer he knew how to solve it and he used to teach him he used to explain it to the boy right he was very short and he is not a very uh, and uh, there is a proverb also very short people are very short minded we know likewise he is very short and very sharp both the qualities he was having he came from a poor but educated family many poor people are not educated families many educated families are not poor so both the qualities are here he came from a poor but educated family his father was a high school teacher to see high school teacher in un those days how much he was getting just can you answer it in rupees below 10 can you imagine his salary would be uh, say 7 and 1/2 rupees or 8 rupees or 12 rupees or like that the salary is like that below 20 only not more than that but even then they used to have very big families 
a compound family they used to have they used to maintain all these families and they used to see every child of the family is educated or not whether every child of the family has has been fed or not they used to see with the same the meager salary and many teachers i know they had gone without salary even they taught without salary even a teacher so he was a son of a teacher of a middle family middle class teacher and he is a high school teacher and his father was an avid reader of english literature i will let you know what is the difference between language and liter literature in the coming class he like all boys in his class was trying to get admission into some engineering college let's say in those days uh, only target ask any student what would you like to become when you grow up engineer that was the only answer they used to give and second rung people second step doctor there was no choice at all doctor and engineer they want to become either this or that and if not you are a failure and you are somewhere some clerk or something somewhere you will be getting up or not in this cadre of a doctor and engineer somewhere else you will be raising up so as every boy was thinking that he would become a, an engineer this boy too wanted to become an engineer the brighter ones wanted to study in the indian institute of technologies that is iit today right there was an entrance test for iit you all know it i need not tell you this boy along with his friends applied to apia for the test if you want to become an engineer you should score the highest marks there used to be very limited engineering colleges in andhra as far what i know kakinada was one engineering college long ago and the other andhra university engineering college oyu engineering college venkateswara university had come later they were having one engineering college not more than that now if you simply stand here in sr nagar junction you will be seeing n number of buses having the name plate something some technical institution every means engineering college become a very easy going in a very uh, a junction you will be having an engineering college and same way the medical colleges also in those days is not like that a person getting more than 80 or more than 90 percent marks he or she is only eligible to get entrance into that college premises that way they were and now it is uh, something different you have to go to mset you have to qualify yourself and there will be a big list waiting list and you will be called likewise it is there but in those days iit entrance if not if you are getting a good scoring here you will be getting engineering college seat and of course the scholarship is followed if you are a good student so i am talking about those days not now that means uh, earlier to say earlier to 60s likewise 61 or 62 they did not have any special books or coaching all these iit aspirants would sit below the shade of a stone mandap close to chamundi hills in the sleepy town of mysore here amir pet from there kokatpalli from there even down to your bhel you just count the coaching classes you will forget counting that many coaching classes are there now and the books publishers n number of publishers they are publishing books on this and set preparing and in those days there were no special books there were no coaching classes nothing if at all you want to appear for the entrance examination of iit you have to prepare by yourself that's all means now you can understand what kind of intelligence you should have all these aspirants of iit along with our murti garu 
they used to sit on the mandap stone mandap of chamundi hills there chamundi hills are near mysore there they used to sit and they used to study and who was intelligent among them no doubt our murti garu used to coach them all he was the guide for the others he told it now while the others struggled to solve the problems in the question paper he would smile shyly and solve them in no time everybody was just scratching their heads how to solve this problem but for murti it is not like that it is very easy very with a very slight smile on his lips very shy smile and he used to solve it that easily used to solve the problems he sat alone below a tree and dreamt of studying at iit every aspirant they used to dream day and night whenever they are alone that he had appeared for the iit entrance and he had been selected and he is admitted into and he is going to into the class that way they used to dream it was the ultimate aim for any bright boy at the age as it still is today of course today also the same thing he was then only 16 years old in those days the what we call as the branches of engineering was different now many more things have been added into our engineering branch right software engineer if a small boy is asked he will say i will become a computer engineer he will say very as if it is a very chocolate as if he is eating chocolate he will say i will become computer engineer very smoothly he will speak so they were dreaming and the branches were very limited right and of course i have known the days when the engineer pass out from the college fresh student they were not having jobs ready in those days my friend was an engineer and he was working in a railway as a gang workman i know it and many more engineers automobile engineers and electrical engineers mechanical engineers they were going to calcutta hindustan motors for 500 rupees they were working for 500 now 500 yesterday i lost a 500 note in a bus i didn't care about it that is the 500 now and in those days an engineer's salary monthly salary was 500 now you see how lucky you people are how much you can demand if you are reading well and if you are placed well right he was then only 16 years old the d day came what is this d day d day means the appointed day so d day is that day cut off day or separation day or whatever you call that is the day people may be facing something that is the day he came to bangalore stayed with some relatives and appeared for the entrance test entrance test nowadays in every school in every college there will be entrance and you have to get your hall ticket see for your hall, this one examination hall and you can go there but in those days the centers are restricted appointed only bangalore calcutta hyderabad madras and new delhi that's all or mumbai you have to travel all the way to mumbai travel all the way to chennai travel all the way to bangalore that is the situation so mysore to bangalore though it is very near are in those days it is a very hard thing for a middle class boy so he has to go to bangalore and he was not having much of a money to stay in a hotel so he put up with his relatives and appeared for the entrance test he did very well but would only say okay when asked people asked him how did you do he said okay okay means what for him okay is good he never boasted himself i have done much now i will tell you our students hey i left four questions ra but okay i will pass i will pass no doubt four questions uh, time is not there you see they blame the time they blame the situation they blame other things circumstances and they don't answer it 
But this boy, after completion of his examination, people asked him, how did you do? He said, okay. Okay means for him, it is quite good. Excellent. It was the opposite when it comes to food. It may be very good when he is writing examination, when he is commenting on his own examinations, but it is something different when he is talking about food. Who has written this? We have to remember. Sudha Narayan Murthy has written this. His own wife. So what she put it here is whenever he had been questioned or he has been questioned how is the food? He says okay. There okay means not good. That is opposite. When he said okay, it implied bad. When he said good, it implied okay. When he said excellent, it implied good. He principle, his principle was never to hurt anyone. You see, how, what we call uh, somber here he is. A very passive. He never wanted somebody to be hurt by his activity or by his action or be, by his words. Right? He never says what nonsense you are doing. No. He is a very soft spoken and a very sweet spoken even. The IIT entrance results came. As expected, he had passed with a high rank. What a delight for any student. He was thrilled. He went to his father who was reading a newspaper. You see, IIT entrance examination, getting selection. In your Hyderabad also, there is an IIT now. In those days, IIT Kanpur, IIT Karakpur, IIT Pilani. Likewise, uh, uh, Rurki, IIT Rurki. There are very limited IIT institutions all over India. Very limited. So, if at all you are getting admission into it, that is a, quite, a great a matter of great pride. That's all. My son is an IITN. It's a great concern of pride, we can say. So he got passed and also got a very good high rank. He went to his father and he wanted to speak to him. His father was reading a newspaper. Anna, I have passed the exam. Very politely and very softly he put it. Well done, my boy. The father did not jump. The father did not jump because he knew the burden. I want to join IIT. His father stopped reading the paper. He closed the paper and put it aside. He lifted his head, looked at the boy and said with a heavy voice. You see, one way he is very happy his son could make it through. His son could make it through. And so he is very happy. But at the same moment, he could not make it through for his son. So he is unhappy. These two feelings made his voice very heavy. That is the thing, heavy voice. My son, you are a bright boy. You know our financial position. I have five daughters to be married of and three sons to educate. I am a salaried person. I cannot afford your expenses at IIT. You can stay in Mysore and study as much you, as you want. See the option. He got through the entrance examination in high rank. But here is the hurdle. His father cannot afford the expenses. What are the reasons said? Five daughters he had and these five daughters are to be given into marriage. Right? And there are three more children, sons, in addition to Murti. And these three are also to be educated to his level. Right? Now you can imagine what would be the feelings of both the father and son. And in the beginning itself, the father put a word, you are a very intelligent boy. You can understand things, very understandable boy you are. 
that way the father put it and also assured what you can read whatever you want in mysore itself he wanted to become an iitian and his father said you can read as much as you want here at mysore see the irony over there this is called irony he got something good and he could not get it it has come up to this level bus he could not reach it that is the situation that is called irony so indeed it was a difficult situation of any father to say no to his bright son for the father also it is a very difficult situation can he feel happy because his son is a high ranker in iit entrance examination can he feel unhappy because he could not send him to iit see the situation there there how a father would have would have felt over there it was common then for the man to be the single earning member with a large family dependent on him five daughters four sons nine children how many brothers and sisters you are having at most you are one and your sister is one or you are one your brother is one two in a family two children right and your father is affording for your education think and it is the commitment for you that you are to give a good returns to your father think about that first see the situation of our narayan murthy here and see your situation right monthly how much your father is spending on you for your education how much can he spend on you in your further higher studies that also you have to take into account and if it is a business yes it is a business you are to buy education you are buying it and uh, is the amount spent and the amount of education which you are getting are they bit balancing that we have to see so this lesson is here for you so now you can understand a very big family of nine children his wife and himself that means 11 members on his meager salary as a teacher he had to look after can he send narayan murthy for iit no his father was sad that he had to tell the bitter truth to his son there will be hardly any father who can readily divulge his incompetence i can say or inability to his son nenu cheyalenu ra no father can tell to his son think it how under what obligation you are with your father your father could not say cannot say i cannot spend this if at all you are asking him a mobile phone he is readily bringing it and you are not satisfied with the 1000 or 1500 or 2000 or 3000 mobile phone you wanted 8000 mobile phone but your father is bringing it for you now you can think a phone 8000 which is only for speaking or chatting and wasting your time he is giving it to you here narayan murthy's father iit ct he got it but he could not send for the education now you think about it the boy had under had to understand the reality you are to understand the reality now you are in class 10th you are to understand your father you are to understand your mother then only you can get success and so this lesson is here how amicable narayan murthy was i don't put it was because he is still there how amicable he is right how understandable he is he has seen the situation he could able to understand his father's financial condition and he readily agreed okay iit is not there in my luck in my fortune let it be that way he discarded it he left it and if your father is not giving a mobile of 8000 what you are doing you know it i need not to put here the teenager was disappointed it seemed his dreams had burned to ashes he was so near to fulfilling his fondest hope yet so far 
His heart sank in sorrow. Didn't he feel for his this uh, a small hurdle? Surely he felt because he nurtured that wish from his class one till he completed his twelfth class, or in those days it is called as a pre-university or twelfth class. Up to that higher secondary, he had nurtured this wish of becoming an IITian. But with a simple word of his father, he had to shatter all his hopes. He, he has to make them into ashes, burn, ash, remove from the hurt. Now how much difficulty he must have faced, just feel it. You need not have to express, feel it. He did not reply. He never shared his unhappiness or helplessness with anybody. He was an introvert by nature. His heart was bleeding, but he did not get angry with anybody. And did he go to his friends and express, I, I got through no high rank, no, but my dad, the old fellow, no, he is not sending rain. Did he say that? No. And just let me put once again the mobile. If you are not getting it, how you speak to your friends about your father? Just compare. Here the question of life and death here. And you were in case you, in your case, it is only a mobile. What kind of language you put for your father? Just think. He did not speak because he is an introvert. He keeps all the difficulties to himself. And he can smile and he can softly speak to others. That is introvert. He was an introvert by nature. His heart was bleeding, but he did not get angry with anybody. He did not express his anger to anybody. He kept it within himself. And he pacified it. Anger, no anger. Come on, come down, come down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. Likewise, he got it down. The day came. All his friends were going to join into IIT. The day came. His classmates were leaving for Madras. Madras? Now it is Chennai. And most of you know it is a Madras only. They were taking a train from Mysore to Madras. They were going from Mysore to Madras. They have shared good years in school and college together. He went to the station to say goodbye and good luck to them for their future life. He did go to the station. He is not disheartened. I will not go to the station. I cannot see them and I cannot just have it. I cannot digest it. No, that is not there with him. He went to the station to see them all off. All his classmates were going to Madras. Mysore to Madras. And he went there to see them off. No anger, nothing. No jealousy even. At the station, his friends were already there. They were excited and talking loudly. The noise was like the chirping of birds. They were all excited and discussing their new hostels, new courses, etc. He was not part of it. So he stood there silently. One of them noticed and said, you should have made it. Now you see, suppose a group of students, they are going to join into a separate college. A few students among you, you are joining in a separate college. You are all going in a bus or by walking. How much noise will you be making? No doubt, you will be speaking something and your friend will not be hearing. He will be speaking something, his friend will not be speaking. The whole group, everybody wants to talk and none wants to hear. And that kind of situation arises here when all his friends are going to Madras, leaving Mysore. Everybody was talking to. It is just like the chirping of birds over there. No meaning for that, chirping of birds. But this boy, he kept himself aloof, separate, not talking, not speaking to anybody, not interacting to anybody. He is standing there. The purpose of his coming over there is to see them off. One of the boy had seen him standing over there, aloof, not speaking. 
So he expressed, you should have made it. You should have made it means what? Anyhow you should have asked your father to spend on you. You should have persuaded your father. That way the boy asked him. He did not reply. He only wished all of them. They waved at him as the train slowly left the platform. He stood there even after he could no longer see the train or the waving hands. It was the June of 1962 in Mysore city. 1962, I already told you. Maybe it is the story of 1960s, 1962. Means what? Very few IITs, very few engineering colleges. You have to remember that. Not just like today. There are many mushroom engineering colleges all over Hyderabad. Not only all over, all over Hyderabad. All over India. So, in 1962, in Mysore city, on the platform, this boy was forlorn, left by everybody, and he was standing there. Monsoon had set in, and it was getting dark. If it is 6 o'clock, anywhere, the darkness will be descending and it is already monsoon and so the darkness is descending it is becoming night it has started to drizzle yet he stood there motionless it is drizzling very slowly it is started raining drop by drop but he stood there as if he lost something as if he was separated from somebody he stood there as if somebody has taken away his luck as if somebody just cursed him against his fortune he stood there he was looking looking to what looking to nothingness because in front of him the train has already left his friends have already gone now on that platform he in front of his eyes there is only nothingness he was looking into it he said to himself without anger or jealousy you see though he was looking at the nothingness though he had sent off or see, seen off everybody to madras he was not having any anger or jealousy all students from the iits study well and do big things in life but it is not the institution ultimately it is you and you alone who can change your life by hard work I have known among you people there are many students changing the institution, changing the school, this school, that school, that school is very good, this school is very good, that way you are changing it. It is not the school who can bring success to you, it is you, it is not the institution. He said, Narayan Murthy very rightly said, it is not the institution, it is you, you have to work hard. And then only success is in your hand. Once again I will read this paragraph for you. He said to himself without anger or jealousy. All students from the IITs study well. And do big things in life. But it is not the institution. Ultimately it is you. And you alone who can change your life by hard work. Remember this. Probably he was not aware that he was following the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita. You see the philosophy. What it one? Your best friend is yourself and your worst enemy is yourself. If you are doing good, you are the best friend of yourself. And if at all you are doing everything wrong, the worst, so you are the worst enemy of yourself. Now you decide whether you want to be your friend or enemy. That is what Bhagavad Gita says and our Narada Murthy also decided on these lines only, on this philosophy itself. Later, he worked very hard and focused on one thing, never bothering about his personal life or comforts. He never bothered what kind of shirt I am wearing. I have seen him personally. He is a very simple man. Very simple pair of glasses, very simple shirt, even crimpled. And this occasionally he wears, right? And talking also, not hi-fi talking, 
very simple talking always gives respect even to a small kid i have seen him personally and so i could say this about him later he worked very hard and focused on the thing never bothering about the personal life or comforts comforts are different and i am different comforts are different i am different that way he decided and worked hard he shared his wealth with others he never used to help uh, used the help of any caste community or political connections to go up in life now i put these names bajaz firodias dhut garware without the help of maharashtrian government or any political party they had not grown to these heights no industrialist without the backing of any political person or a political party without that he cannot prosper he cannot get the heights that is the present day situation but narayan murthy is different out of the way for these people why he never had taken the help of his caste fellow you are a brahmin no i am also brahmin please help me no i am also kapu you are also kapu please help me no he had never taken that help he had not taken any help from any political leader maybe he is his classmate maybe but he had not taken help from him also not from a political party not from any community not from any caste also caste community and party he put them aside and he worked hard and he stood now into this height a son of a school teacher showed other indians it was possible to earn wealth legally and ethically ethical means principles you should have a principle that is i don't touch this money if it is not mine and i don't leave this paisa if it is mine that is ethic that is principle in a principled manner if you are earning you can scale any heights and also in a very legal manner means if i am earning 100 rupees this 10% of it is should go to government that is called tax that is called income tax whatsoever why i should not keep that 10% or 20% whatsoever aside and pay to the government that way he made it there are no cases pending on him never no pf case on his employee side nothing and even there are no labor cases against him nothing no cases nothing if at all there is a 100 rupees and that 100 rupees will be split among the people very legally if at all something is left out of that even he spends for the social welfare that is also there we are coming across that he built a team of people who were equally good for that what is necessary is my son should be good then only i can be good my wife should be good then only i can be good my daughter in law should also be good then only my son can be good and i can be good my wife should be good and again my grandson should also be good means the people around you should also be should be good then only you can be good why is you may be thinking in a good manner you may be having good ethics you may be having good principles you may be having a very good what we call as a legality legal connections maybe but if your son is not good you have to forego your ethics you have to go forego your legalities and your wife is not good that way the people around him also he kept everybody very good he was having a very good team of good workers and good employees and good fellow men he became a pioneer of indian software industry indian software industry has developed only under after 1980s i i can uh, say 1990 even then only people were knowing what is a computer and how to do a computer how to work on the computer before that nobody was knowing it but from then only our narayan murthy was working on computers 
and software. So today he has become an icon of simplicity, uncompromising quality and and fairness apart from being a philanthropist. He really believes in the motto powered by intellect and driven by values. He is none other than Nagawa, Nagavara Rama Rao Narayanamurthy, the founder of Infosys, a leading IT company in the world. Infosys, I need not tell you, everybody here knows it. It is a multi-million money that he has earned that much of money and it has uh, all over the world it has branches and must have some millions of people must be working for him right and this man only Narayana Murthy is the founder member of that and he erected this empire complete empire of a software industry he is a pioneer in India he is a beginner in India for a new thought that is called pioneer so the other thing is a philanthropist when it is called philanthropist means the person one who wants to help others he takes he takes the happiness in helping others philanthropist so not only about uh, narayan murthy we have to read something about uh, sudha murthy also his wife and uh, is an indian social worker she was an indian social worker and author, she writes many things. Murthy began her professional career as a computer scientist and engineer. She is also equally engineer and scientist in computers. She is the chairperson of the Infosys Foundation. As I said, if he is earning 100 rupees, he equally distributes it and he uh, discharges the legal obligations and uh, paying the taxes everything and the residue only will be taken as his earning out of that also he earmarks some fund for his foundation what does he do with the foundation she is the same person of that foundation and she has founded several orphanages orphanages the houses for the children who are not having mothers mother and father no relatives nobody to take up, take care now Participated in rural development efforts. She has participated in rural development. Village means welfare of the village and welfare of villages. That way she has taken care of the, that area. Supported the movement to provide all Karnataka government schools with computer and library facilities. Most of the Karnataka schools, this foundation funded them for uh, computer and libraries. Most of them. Uh, here it is said, all the Karnataka government schools here it is said, but maybe most of them, they are utilizing, they are using the computers and the libraries received from this foundation. And established the Murthy Classical Library of India at Harvard University. Murthy Classical Library means here, only the books which can give you our classic literature, we can find these books here in the library. Where? In the Harvard University, not here in India. Murthy also teaches computer science and composed fiction dollar source. The present story is a selection from one of her most successful stories, How I Taught My Grandmother to Read and other stories. She had uh, scripted or she had written many short stories out of them. One is a very famous one, How I Taught My Grandmother to Read. I feel in the CBSC syllabus the lesson is there. Okay, stop.